So we have one more um, presenter this morning standing between us and lunch. Pete. So uh, we, we've got a, a great presentation uh, from Pete Ellis. He's here to talk to us about 3D technology. Um, we've got a new product in development, um, not quite ready for prime time, but we wanted to bring it here to you so we could show it off, show you the technology, show you our investments. Pete's going to talk more about HP in 3D stereoscopic solutions that we'll be bringing to market, and uh, I'll turn it over to Pete. Very good. Thank you, Jeff. <clears throat> you know, uh, a few short years ago, if somebody mentioned 3D, I would imagine a theater just like this one where everybody was wearing glasses with red and blue lenses in them. Born back in the 50s, uh, anaglyphic technology provided 3D experience in that manner, but it didn't quite catch on for a variety of reasons. <clears throat> uh, one of the reasons it failed to sustain kind of where it was going was because there was a lot of crosstalk with the red and the blue images. There was also a kind of a lack of color depth in the image itself. But really what did it in was it was mainly used for effect when you had stuff coming right at you and it was trying to shock and awe the audience. But it didn't really do anything to add value to the story. And that's why it's mainly used today in, in photography, where you've got uh, still images that, that can be uh, 3D enabled. So why all the hype now about 3D being back in movies? And there's a, there's a whole slew of uh, new films that are coming out that are 3D enabled. Uh, you also have 3D in games. And anybody who attended the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas saw that the consumer electronic business is really promoting 3D televisions and Blu-ray players as well. One of the reasons, not, uh, not the only reason, but one of the reasons is the glasses you're all wearing today. Uh, the polarized glasses allow for a discrete signal to go for, for both your left and right eye. And that's more in, in tune with the way we actually see. We have both eyes and we actually see everyday life in 3D. So being able to make the viewing experience of a movie or a game or other content available into a way that's more comfortable for us to to view, it becomes more realistic for us and we feel immersed in the story. So it really changes the way the story is told. Why is HP interested in 3D? Well, there's a few different reasons. Our customers are certainly creating the 3D content uh, and they require tools, technologies, and partnerships that we can certainly help offer. Um, within HP's uh, core IT infrastructure of what you see in front of you here, uh, we require the horsepower needed to do a lot of the computing uh, for 3D. And it's, it's no small task. It's roughly twice the amount of computing that you're, you're doing today with a 1D or a 2D type of movie because you have both a left and right image. Uh, but let me, let me also add some other uh, reasons why that's important. Uh, from a computer animated movie, for instance, uh, and I believe you're going to see a little bit later about using a, a virtual camera to do... Um, pre-visualization. This allows them to take their scene in a computer animated film and be able to get a glimpse at what that scene is going to look like before they do any of the actual full filming of that scene. And it saves them a lot of time within their pipeline of the workflow. They're able to get more people to collaborate earlier on. And it makes the whole process much more efficient and fun for the, for the animators to do. Uh, we're also looking to uh, improve the display technology, um, whether it's in the theater uh, or in the home, and then also bringing it into the workplace too. Beyond doing film and type, that type of content, if you're either, say, in oil and gas, and you're tasked with being able to find new energy sources miles under the Earth's surface, this 3D technology is going to be very useful there. Or if you're a doctor, or better yet, you're a patient of a doctor who's about to go under a knife, you certainly want that doctor to be armed with all the information that they can have to make you a better uh, well person again. There are some challenges that we, uh, that we have uh, going forward with this technology. First, there's a, a number of different uses that this content is being developed for, whether it's gaming, uh, concert type of video, live action type of footage. Uh, and the way that the uh, content providers approach creating this content is going to be totally different from doing a traditional 2D film. Because remember, what's important for them is to bring the audience into the picture, to make you feel like you're part of that and be immersed. It's a very visceral experience for them. So for being able to do that um, is very key. A great example, uh, you saw some of the NBA footage uh, earlier. 
So a cameraman in the NBA can't film a game in 3D the way that they would traditionally film it. It just wouldn't quite work. But instead, I think as you saw, uh, having that uh, kind of courtside seat point of view is just amazing. I've never had that courtside seat. I'm, I'm not that lucky. But um, let's face it, I'm not uh, a tall guy either. I'm, I'm somewhat vertically challenged in that area. But when you see it in 3D, these players, not just one, but all of them, they're just massive. It's amazing how gigantic they are. If they were blue and had tails, I would think I was watching a James Cameron movie. But the fact that they're able to go up and down that court and really show off all their athletic skill is just amazing to be able to watch that. So I really applaud what the NBA is doing uh, in terms of using 3D to, to their advantage. Another challenge is within the display technologies. There are some challenges with theaters because theaters will have different size screens in them. But other than that, their, their lighting, their sound, and so forth is all pretty much controlled. When you have a home environment, though, when we see the releases of some of the 3D TVs and with the Blu-ray players and so forth, there are going to be challenges because nobody places their TV in exactly the same spot. And there's always different lighting uh, challenges that they're going to have and their furniture placement and so forth. So making sure that we have a consistent view of 3D in, in the home is something that we're certainly looking forward to, to trying to offer better solutions for. Uh, the third of the, of the, say, the top three uh, would be with the glasses. Today, there is no standard uh, for these glasses. So there's all types of different uses where we're seeing these glasses put into play, whether it be a notebook that is 3D enabled, a uh, desktop display that is 3D enabled, or your television that is 3D enabled. There are different types of glasses being used in various applications. And not to mention the, uh, the shutter glass types of uh, solutions for these are, are somewhat expensive. You know, it's not easy to get a whole family equipped with 3D glasses if, uh, if you're going to have expensive uh, cost constraints to be able to do that. Some of the ways that uh, HP is looking to help, uh, we've formed a 3D consortium uh, that consists of uh, ourselves as well as a very diverse group of other companies. You have large movie uh, houses here. You also have smaller independent filmmakers. Uh, you've got uh, advertisers involved. And we also have like uh, the NBA uh, that is involved. One of the things that they've done is uh, they had a forum uh, panel at Sundance Film Festival where they educated and evangelized to other filmmakers about the challenges uh, in 3D filming, what pitfalls to try to avoid, what, what new ways to try to look at a scene and try to be able to film it so that it's going to make that experience more, adversive, uh, more, adversive, more immersive. Because for them, it's all about making good 3D. The industry is not going to prevail if they start uh, having bad 3D uh, film experiences. They want to make sure that it's uh, a very entertaining uh, aspect for it. Also within uh, our HP labs, we've been working on a project called uh, Pluribus. And this is shown off also at Sundance. It's a very large 80 foot by uh, 20 foot display uh, that is in 3D. And it's actually a configuration of using six standard off the shelf types of video projectors. And it's using software to stitch them all together uh, to form this gigantic uh, image. And this is where we've been using some of this technology to do the NBA types of uh, applications and really help promote and evangelize with 3D, but also get a better idea of some of the challenges so that we can offer better solutions for them going forward. And finally, because 3D isn't something that you can really experience by, by reading a two-dimensional type of data sheet, uh, we do have a demonstration in one of the tents uh, outside. Uh, it's a 23-inch uh, panel that's uh, full HD and powered by a 120 hertz uh, refresh rate, which is great for gamers, but also perfect for uh, being able to do 3D as well. Uh, only one caveat, I do want to mention that since it's outside, this is not a digital signage product. It's meant to be indoors and so forth. So the, the sunlight might, uh, might get a little um, interfering with it. So make sure that you uh, are able to shade yourselves well. <laughs>